Hey everybody, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden, and I'm going to make a uh, necklace today using some of my beads from um, Jesse James Beads Design Ambassador Pack. Um, I'm using a lot of them out of uh, the, um, it's Illuminating an Ultimate Gray. You can see that. There it is. I don't have a lot left in here. I've got a lot of the ones we're going to use for this necklace out in a dish on my uh, mat. And I'm hoping that uh, you'll enjoy this. It's a really simple necklace, so let's turn down and get started on it. Okay, what we have are the beads I'm going to use in this. And then I've cut off a little length of... Um, this is Lemon Quartz, a soft flex, flex, soft flex beading wire. It's about the only thing I ever use. This is a medium size. And I think I've cut off about a foot here. And then I have uh, some crimp beads in gold. And I have some chain reaction to finish this off. This is number one. And I also have a little hammered crescent moon. This teardrop was out of the um, illuminating yellow and ultimate gray kit. And a little key. This is going to make our pendant. So let's get stringing, shall we? Well, actually here, I have a picture of what I have drawn. So we can see what it's going to look like when it's done. So just get with this just I'm gonna put a uh, bead stopper on and start with one side of this let's dump these out this is gonna be our middle bead it's a pretty boho there's actually two of these in the kit but I only need one so we'll put the boho on first come on And we're going to put this little gray bumper type thing so it's right up against there. Gray bead. A little crystal rondel spacer. This pretty yellow oval. Now actually, originally I was going to put these two these ovals on both of them. I have four here on the one end and uh, then I decided that that would be way too bright on that end so I changed it up some. So another crystal, another gray, another crystal spacer. Next we're going to go to this really pretty faceted um, clear And this bigger uh, crystal rondelle spacer and one of these big yellow beads. Next we're going to put on this bead cap. It looks sort of like a little flower top facing the big one and then um, the square, this uh, it's rectangle, rectangular gray one of these uh, potato chips. These um, fit nicely. They go over it and sort of fold. That's a really nice uh, trick. Um, another one of the yellow ones now. Another uh, small crystal rondelle. And then the gray. And there's one side done. Now we will put a uh, bead stopper on that side and get the other side. I think this is going to look really pretty. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the uh, same thing in the opposite direction. Oh, 
Okay. Thought maybe I was missing one of my little uh, crystal spacers, but I wasn't. It was just hiding behind the bigger one. Now, if you'll notice, this bead looks a little rougher on this side, so that's going to turn into the to the rondelle, and it's going to get hidden. So no problem. You can see. Put this little guy on. Spacer and gray. Okay, now we'll put the other uh, bead stopper on, and you can see what this is going to look like. Like this as it hangs down. Now we need to figure out how to hang this exactly in here. It's going to sit like this. I'm going to need a, to punch another hole in this crescent to finish this off. So, and then we're going to put the chain reaction up the back. We could crimp this onto the chain right now, but I want to make sure that I have uncomfortable amount of room here to put um, my ba my uh, jump rings in when I put our little crescent moon in. And I'm going to use one of these pieces between the jump ring and the crescent moon, I think. Oh, maybe not. That may be too big. Maybe one of the little rings would be better. Well, let's see. Let's get this open. Let go of the. As you can see, though, this is chain reaction number one. And this is our piece. Trying to find the split ring. They always have a split ring in the middle of these. Why are you kinked up? I'm kink. How very strange. This one doesn't seem to... Ah, there it is. So since I probably will want the crystal closest, maybe I don't. Hmm. Well, we'll decide. I'm going to open this up. I'm thinking I may just want one space between the crystal and chain itself. Yeah, right here. So since that is what I'm thinking I'm going to want, I think I'll just cut it off right here. These aren't the best cutters in the world. That's actually why I use them for this kind of stuff. Okay, there's one piece off. And now we'll cut the other piece off so that it's the same on this side. So I'm going to cut it right here. And then we have these pieces of chain left. This is going to go across the back and we'll open up this by taking out this one loop right here to to um be where we put the clasp in it there we go 
So we'll put these two pieces aside till we decide to put the back on. And we'll get working on this piece for the front. Do is punch a hole in the middle of this little um, moon. So I've got my punch out here. I'm gonna sort of figure the middle here. I think it's it's gonna be about right here. So I'll put a little mark on this so that I can put this on my hole punch, which is sometimes easier said than done, I might add. Okay. No sliding, baby. I think that'll be good. So take, just twist this till you feel it loosen. And once it's loosened, then it's probably all the way through. And as you can see, hole in place. So sometimes a little bit, um, rough on this other side so take your file and just give it a little bit of rub now that will mar up your metal a little bit with your file but we'll make sure that this piece is in the back so that it doesn't show and there we've got that filed down then we're going to attach the key and the teardrop to this but first we're going to see if we can figure out if we need just small jump rings to pull this up here or if we're going to need a large one so let's or maybe even a piece of the chain actually that sounds sort of good let's see how who if that makes it be too long so let's open it up put it on the crescent now we had this one piece we cut already so let's try and see how this is going to Closed. Well, there's that little piece. Come on, baby. So we can. Well, if it will keep the stop uh, popping out of its its ring. Okay, so that can hook to there. Trying to decide if that's going to be longer than I want it to be because I was thinking just right up here. Let's go with this. Let's see how it looks. So we'll get another one of these little rings cut off. And we will jump ring that right onto there. Okay, let's open this from side to side. Through the jump ring, through the little chain piece and close it back up with a twisting motion side to side. So now we have our two chain pieces on 
and we'll put another jump ring on either side of that and hook it up into the bead strand. Let's see if this little one is going to work or if we're going to need something else to put it into there. But I think the little one should work. We need actually the little one to go through the chain. chain this chain is not very large hold and it does not want to um, let us Make sure you've got this closed so it won't doesn't slip through your wire at all. Now we have to get the other side. Let's get the jump ring out and put it on. Make sure you're not twisted up because if you put it on and you're twisted, well, it's not going to lay. So, let's get the other jump ring. Open it with the twisting motion. Now, these are oval jump rings. You can use um, rounds if you prefer. That would work just fine. But remember, you need a small one to go through the chain reaction chain, as the holes are pretty small. Okay, let's tighten her back up. Make sure she's closed good. Looks like she probably is, but we'll do a couple squishes just to make sure. And there is the crescent put on. Now we have to hook the teardrop and the key to it, as well as the chain reaction. And I think I'll put just put the chain reaction first, and we'll do the key and the teardrop last. Um, the chain reaction is pretty simple. You just take the one end and how you want it, and you just crimp the soft flex directly to it. So we need some, a couple of gold crimps. These are soft flex crimps. They're good and strong um, and work really great with the soft flex wire. And uh, now um, I will tell you that beetle on is also a really strong um, wire and you could use that one as well. Now it looks like I've cut this in a way that it doesn't matter which way goes down and which way goes up because are pretty identical. So we'll just take our soft flex, put the crimp tube on. This is a two by two crimp tube. Hook it right through the little hole of the um, of chain reaction. Pull it back and put our crimp tube right, slide our crimp tube right up there. Leave a little space so it's not really tight. And I use a magical crimper. It's got a little divot right there. You put the crimp right in that divot and squish. And then turn it. You do squish again. You want to do this, oh, I don't know, half a dozen times maybe. When you have that done, give it a tug test. That looks good. This gray bead has actually got a pretty good sized hole, so it'll slip right over the uh, soft, the um, doubled soft flex with no problem. And so now we go to the other side. As you can see, I have a lot of uh, soft flex left here. I'd rather have too much than not enough. But uh, get the other chain reaction. Put it through and 
back through this hole. And then we tighten it up. Now, because we want this to go through this gray uh, bead, let's pull it in and just then move everything down, tighten her up, move this down again so it looks like it's pretty well stiffly there. Let's see, this one now needs to be tightened up a touch more or it will be um, way off from the other side. And this is about right, I believe. Let's check it out. Yeah, that looks good. Now, when you do this, make sure your uh, necklace is all twisted up like this. Otherwise, it will get too stiff when you um, when you're uh, finished here. Now, as you can see, there's quite a bit of loose wire here. I probably should have been just a touch tighter, but um, we'll see how she looks. Oh, I should have used my other cutters. These ones have a divot in them. Okay. Ah. Okay. And here we go. As you can see, with the bend in there, it is not really loose anymore. There is some looseness, but not a lot. And we need to put a clasp on and then put our key and teardrop onto the crescent. Okay, now we're going to put the toggle on. Normally this is what finishes it, but I want to have that little time to work on the, um, I don't want this hanging in my way when I'm working on other things. So I have gotten a couple more jump rings, and these again have to be the small ones because we're working at the end of the chain reaction. And then I have this really cool hammered little um, toggle clasp which I like because it has this bend in the bar. So when it goes through, it will hold it like this, whereas the bar bends down around the toggle. I think that makes it more secure. So let's open these toggle, these uh, jump rings up and get the toggle placed. Close it back up with the sideways motion. Now, I, these are oval jump rings. I nearly always use oval jump rings unless there's some reason why I can't. Because the um, split in it is on the long side. Can you see the split here? Let's get it where it's there. There we go. And um, because of this, When your pieces move around, they generally go to the smaller ends and the um, because of the weight distribution. And then your jump ring doesn't have any of your pieces moving into that split. So there's the toggle. So it will easily go on and as I say hold because of the way this bar holds and now we just have to put the teardrop and the key down here and it will be done okay I've got a new spool of 20 gauge German style wire which I'm going to use to wire wrap 
the bead um, and the key together. And when I take a new one out, I cut this little tab off right here. And wrap it around the spool so that I always know what size it is and I don't have to try and figure that out as we're working. So I'll get a little piece of tape out. Oop. Actually, that's probably big enough, but... That there. And we will wrap this around the spool and tape it in place. Now I have a way to identify it without having to compare sizes and everything. My, my uh, identification is right on my spool here now. Okay, now we need to get some of this 20 gauge wire out and we will uh, start our wire wrap to put the key and the teardrop on. We'll need a few inches at least. I'd rather have extra than not enough, so I'm going to take this big strand here. And we'll put our wire up and out of our way. And we're going to straighten this up some. Now, if it'll finger straighten, that's great. But if it needs some a little bit more, then of course, get your uh, nylon drop pliers out to do it. But I am going to first hook the key onto the teardrop. And I'm going to use my bill making pliers to do this. I think you can make a nice round loop, see? And we'll put the key on. Grab hold of the loop with one pair of pliers and then wrap at least oh, three, four times. I usually wrap at least three, but if you're going to be want it good and secure, so I'm going to put in three. But we want to cut it, if at all possible, towards the back so that um, it doesn't show so much when you... And then tuck the wire. Make sure that's tucked, tucked nicely. And now we're going to feed the teardrop bead on. We'll just push this down onto here. Now I actually wanted my teardrop going this way and I cut my wire here. So I'm going to cut a little teeny touch more off so it doesn't show in order to do that, since I tucked it, I've got to get it off a little bit because I don't want to accidentally cut my base wire here. Okay. That should do it. Now this guy goes down on here. And there's our key. our teardrop. Now we want to 
make a loop this direction so that it can go onto our hole we drilled. Oh, now let's see if this will go through the hole all right. I should have just checked that prior to doing this. Ah, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Except for I have it on backwards to the way I want it because I specifically made this for the key to go the other direction. So let's turn it. And there, now we have it right. Now we do the exact same thing we did before. Get hold of it with our pliers. This loop doesn't appear to be quite round. Let's see if I can get it to straighten itself some. Okay, there we go. Cut it off. First we'll straighten this loop up some. Looks like it's a little bit crooked. Well, let's straighten it after we cut off the excess wire. I'm going to keep this piece of wire because it's pretty long. Okay, then we just need to tuck it. Be careful when you're tucking it because this is a glass bead here. And then straighten that loop up some, since we couldn't straighten it up as much as we wanted with the excess wire there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now this is a little crooked. Okay, and our necklace is finished. see we have our little pendant down here now all the way up here and our chain with this so let's put everything uh, we'll put everything away and we'll hold this up and show it to you okay there we are and this is our necklace our finished necklace yep that's the back side and Little pendant with the key and the teardrop. Our little crescent moon, which is hooked on by little pieces of chain reaction. Our bead strands. And our chain reaction up the back. Other than the few the chain at the chain reaction and a few of the odds and end things I added, all of this was from the um, Illuminating Yellow and Ultimate Gray Mix. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks. Bye-bye.